The JRPG genre can be daunting and intimidating for people to get into. I want to talk about 10 JRPGs suitable for people who have never even touched a JRPG before. JRPG, Japanese role-playing games, a genre that often has complex stories, deep characters, complicated gameplay mechanics, and level-up systems that can confuse even the most experienced gamer. It can be intimidating for someone who has never played a JRPG before. So today I'm here to talk about 10 JRPG mechanics and 10 JRPGs that might be perfect for someone looking to play their very first JRPG. Before we start though, if you are a seasoned veteran of the genre, some of these games might seem, for lack of a better word, basic to you. Keep in mind this is meant to advise of great introductory JRPGs, maybe not the best games the genre has to offer. And if you are well versed in the world of JRPG, I want you to help introduce people to the genre as well. So leave a comment below letting me and everyone else know what game you would use to introduce someone to the wonderful genre that is JRPG. As for the list itself, it's not in any specific order and I will be considering simplicity of story, difficulty of the game, and ease of gameplay mechanics when deciding what should make the list. And hey, if you want more JRPG content, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss anything on the channel. Alright, it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of today's video. Let's talk about 10 JRPGs that would be great as an introduction to the genre. Super Mario RPG, released for the Nintendo Switch in 2023, also released for the Super Nintendo in 1996. But for today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Switch remake. Usually when somebody thinks of video games as a whole, Mario is one of the first things that comes to mind. But what makes Super Mario RPG a great intro JRPG for people who haven't touched the genre before? Well, first of all, it's easy. Like, incredibly easy. And even if you still have difficulty with it, which wouldn't be uncommon for somebody who isn't used to the type of gameplay, there is an easier difficulty that increases foldable items to make it easier to stay alive, and the combat in general is a bit easier. Super Mario RPG also introduces timed button presses, with a guide that sticks around if you're having trouble with these button presses. Now, games with timed button presses aren't all that common, but if you are looking for a game with them, Super Mario RPG is one of the best. With a simple story, fun gameplay, and a relatively short length at about 10-20 to 20 hours, Super Mario RPG is a great game to introduce someone to JRPGs. And besides, who doesn't want to smack a Goomba in the face with a frying pan? Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, released for the Super Nintendo in 1992. Now keep in mind, this is the turn-based RPG for the Super Nintendo, not the European port of Final Fantasy Adventure for the original Game Boy that got renamed Mystic Quest. Now, I know people are going to go ahead and say Mystic Quest is a terrible game because it's too basic, but in the end, isn't that what you want for somebody who's starting out with JRPGs? Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is basically one giant tutorial for RPGs. It teaches everything a player unfamiliar with the genre would need to know. First of all, the story is super simple. There's a big baddie, you need to destroy said baddie, visit crystals, so on and so forth. Most RPGs do follow a kind of story structure like this, was a great way to introduce it without any substantial twists and turns. In addition, the concept of grinding is taught incredibly well. You have certain areas of the world map that are just battle arenas. Battle after battle, and they're there to teach you what leveling up does. With breaks in between each fight, it basically says, hey, if I fight these enemies over and over, I get stronger, and if I get stronger, I will have an easier time going through dungeons and fighting bosses. And I'm sure we can all agree that this is a staple of most RPGs. With different types of weapons, you learn about weaknesses, and enemies visibly show when they're nearing death. Honestly, this is the perfect game to teach all kinds of mechanics to someone who might be unfamiliar with them. It might seem basic and bland to an experienced player, 
but for someone that really hasn't played a JRPG, it fits just right. Wild Arms, released for the original PlayStation in 1996. Wild Arms is a pretty well-known franchise, one of the few JRPGs that has a western theme with cowboys, expansive deserts, wonderful music. It's a beautiful and fun game. But why would I suggest Wild Arms for our first RPG? Well, sure, the gameplay is simple, and the exploration is plentiful, but the real reason is the introduction of puzzles. The Wild Arms series is particularly known for having all kinds of different puzzles. From moving blocks, to pressing buttons in the right order, or there is the unique aspect of Wild Arms and using your individual tools. You might have to use bombs to blow up walls, or use your little flying rat hand pan to press the distance switch, or maybe you use a fire rod to light lanterns to open a door. Puzzles are a standard of JRPGs, and Wild Arms has relatively simple and straightforward puzzles, and as you progress in the game, they get a little bit more difficult. Sure. Puzzles aren't incredibly common these days, but they are still a core aspect of the JRPG experience. Trials of Mana, released for the PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC in 2020, is a remake of the 1995 release of the same name, also known as Seiken Densetsu 3. I feel Trials of Mana is the best game to introduce an action JRPG to someone. Trials of Mana offers several difficulty modes to suit a skill level for someone who may or may not be used to action games already. Trials of Mana has pretty basic controls for an action RPG, making for a very good introduction to the genre. You have a weak attack, a strong attack, two special attack buttons, a menu button, and honestly that's about it. Very basic, but easy to understand, along with six different characters that all have slightly different playstyles. The game isn't terribly long and it's meant to be played three separate times to see all three storylines, so the commitment isn't terrible either. Always a good sign for someone new to the genre. Not to mention Trials of Mana is an amazing game that anyone who enjoys action RPGs really needs to play. The original is great as well, but I feel the remake is much more accessible in the current day and age. Atelier Ryza, released for the PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC in 2019. The Atelier series is known for its focus on item creation as a core mechanic of the game. Most of the Atelier games have a very strict time limit, not making it accessible for even seasoned veterans of the genre. A time limit in general causes stress and gives that feeling that you're always going to miss something. All three of the Ryza games do not have this time limit, which lets you experiment with the item creation system as you don't have to make every choice matter. You can take your sweet time, and if it gets too much and you find out that item creation just isn't for you, you can just use the auto mode, totally bypassing dealing with item creation yourself. Now, I wouldn't suggest this myself, but item creation can be overwhelming, especially later on in the games. The game in general isn't the most difficult in itself, but it does have difficulty settings in case grasping the concept of battles is just frustrating for you. Though that being said, if combat isn't for you, you can really just avoid battles all you want in an explorer. Atelier Ryza honestly has something for everyone. Persona 5 Royal, released in 2020 for the PlayStation 4, and in 2022 for the Switch, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. This is the second release of Persona 5, which was initially released in 2016. I opted for the Royal release of Persona 5 because it has quite a few quality of life changes within the combat and the social aspect of the game. Like the aforementioned Atelier series, Persona 5 Royal does have a time management aspect, but honestly, it's not that strict. It's a great way to ease into managing your time. Though, one thing that might be a bit of an intimidation though for Persona 5 Royal is the time commitment. Depending on playstyle, it honestly isn't uncommon to spend over 100 hours by the time you finish the game. Time management aside, there is a reason why Persona 5 Royal is consistently at the top of people's best RPG of all time lists. It's easy to get into, it has an incredibly good and easy to understand story, and the plot twists that make you really dislike the antagonist of the storyline while adoring the player characters as well as NPCs. Side note, for those that aren't aware, NPC stands for non-player characters. Basically characters that you run into in the town, 
and maybe in the dungeons. The game is nice and easy to get into, and if difficulty is a bit too high, there are several different difficulty options for you as well, making it an easy enjoyment for anyone interested in JRPGs. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, released in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance. If you're looking to get into a JRPG monster collection game, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green are probably your best options. Realistically, you could probably pick any Pokemon game and just jump into it with no issues. However, I personally feel Fire Red and Leaf Green are the best option to start with, as later games in the franchise introduced more and more game mechanics such as friendship levels, hidden values, more complicated Pokemon types, and so on. Fire Red and Leaf Green are technically part of the third generation, but they're still incredibly basic. Monster Capture RPGs are a unique breed, and Pokemon is just simple. No trying to reason with them, no throwing food at them, just reduce HP and throw balls until Pokemon stays in said ball. Maybe throw a status effect on them for good measure. Pokemon is probably most people's first JRPG, and I know it probably started a lifelong addiction to the genre. It was one of my first JRPGs that I personally owned, but just curious, what is your favorite Pokemon? Let me know in the comments below. For me, mine is probably Caesar. Jean d'Arc, released for the PSP in 2007, also getting a port for the PS5 in July of 2024. Jean d'Arc is an absolutely amazing strategy RPG that also functions as a great entry into the subgenre of JRPG. Jean d'Arc is a spin on the Hundred Years War that took place between England and France, but with a JRPG twist in it throwing in mystical armlets and demons into the mix. So this is great for anybody that loves history as well. Jean d'Arc features an attack triangle system, focusing on elements where every element is strong against one other element, but then weak against another. It seems like a basic system, but it gives a core strategy for which you would focus on. Trying to think of a good strategy RPG was kind of difficult, because most strategy RPGs tend to be really hard to play, but Jean d'Arc is probably one of the most accessible strategy RPGs I've ever played. Personally, I played this just last year, and honestly, I loved it. I was going to pick Final Fantasy Tactics for this spot as well, but take it from someone who played Final Fantasy Tactics as his first strategy RPG, it is difficult, and I can't count how many times I had to go back to an old save point because I got stuck into a battle where it was impossible for me to win. If you want to introduce someone to a strategy RPG, show them John Dark, and they'll love you forever for it. Dragon Quest XI initially released in 2018 on the PS4 and 3DS. Later, with a definitive edition released in 2019 initially for the Switch, and in 2020 for the PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox. Dragon Quest as a whole is the best JRPG series to introduce someone to the JRPG genre. Even after 11 games, it still feels like a very classic RPG, with quality of life changes on each new release as well as a few simple mechanics added here and there. However, even with these new mechanics, it still feels like an old RPG, but just prettier. As for Dragon Quest XI, it's a good entry-level game. Not only for the graphics and gameplay, but it is a great introduction to skill trees. Each character in Dragon Quest XI can equip a couple different weapons. For example, your hero can equip one-handed and two-handed greatswords, and then has an additional luminary skill line. As you level up, you can earn abilities for any of the three options. And once you learn those abilities, you can branch off and learn separate abilities, corresponding to that learned ability that you initially got. Having multiple options lets you decide exactly what you want to build your character. And if you're unhappy with it, you can always reset your character and start over from scratch. Skill trees are incredibly common in JRPGs, and Dragon Quest XI is a great learning point for it. Blue Dragon, released for the Xbox 360 in 2007. Ignoring the fact that Blue Dragon is locked, alongside Lost Odyssey, to a console that generally people would not buy if they liked JRPGs, Blue Dragon is fantastic. However, the one aspect that I feel Blue Dragon is amazing at introducing is job systems. 
Now, job systems are starting to get a little bit more common in JRPGs, but they're not the most common aspect. And personally, job systems are one of my favorite JRPG mechanics. Now, if you're unsure what a job system is exactly, most RPGs, you have a character and they fulfill a specific role. For example, if you play Final Fantasy IX, you have Zidane, he is a thief. You have Steiner, he is a warrior. You have Vivi, he is a black mage. Now, if you have a job system, it allows you to take one of these jobs or classes, such as, say, a warrior for physical damage, a mage for magical damage, or a cleric for healing, and assign it to one of your characters so that they can fill that role, adding a huge amount of customization. Blue Dragon has so many different types of classes, and each class has several abilities that you can mix and match. Blue Dragon just gives so much freedom to learn the job system that it's probably the best way to ease you into that type of mechanic, especially if job systems are a part of the JRPG genre that interests you. So there you have it, 10 aspects of JRPGs and 10 great corresponding JRPGs to introduce you to those specific mechanics. What do you think of my list, and what games do you feel are great JRPGs for a beginner? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, not only to be great and support my channel, but to help out anyone that might be new to the JRPG genre. If you enjoyed this video and want more JRPG content, why not hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate all your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro